ITIL-4 includes 34 management practices, where a management practice is defined as a set of organizational resources designed for performing work or accomplishing an objective. As you can see, ITIL-4 includes 14 general management practices, 17 service management practices, and 3 technical management practices, and the ITIL-4 Foundation publication, course, and exam include 15 of the 34 ITIL-4 practices. General management practices are adopted and adapted from general business management domains for service management. Service management practices are developed in the service management industry. And technical management practices are adapted from technology management domains for service management purposes by expanding or shifting their focus from technology solutions to IT services. While only 15 of the 34 practices are included in the ITIL-4 Foundation publication, course, and exam, I'm showing you all of them here to provide the context that additional practices above the foundation level are included in ITIL-4 and are featured in the modules above foundation in the ITIL-4 certification scheme. Here are the 34 practices in ITIL-4. I've highlighted the practices in ITIL-4 that have roughly equivalent processes or functions in ITIL-V3. Infrastructure and platform management is roughly equivalent to technical management in V3. Software development and management is roughly equivalent to V3's application management. And on the right are the processes and functions in ITIL V3 that are not listed in ITIL 4 practices. Covering why these changes were made is beyond the scope of this course, but you need to understand these changes, so I've listed them here. Here we see the five ITIL V3 lifecycle phases, strategy, design, transition, operation, and improvement and the 26 processes and four functions that fell under them in ITIL v3. ITIL 4 defines processes just as ITIL v3 did, a set of interrelated or interacting activities that transforms one or more defined inputs and turns them into defined outputs through a defined series of actions and their dependencies. A function, you may recall, is an organizational unit or department. ITIL-4 replaces the service lifecycle with the service value chain and repositions a subset of what was called processes and functions in ITIL-V3 with what ITIL-4 calls practices. Let's have a look at these. ITIL-V3 or 2011 edition arranged 26 processes and 4 functions within a 5-part lifecycle as shown here at the top of this diagram. ITIL-4 replaces the 5-part service lifecycle with the 6-part service value chain in the lower part of the diagram and replaces all processes and functions with practices, where a practice is a set of organizational resources designed for performing work or accomplishing an objective. Note that unlike ITIL v3, which places processes and functions in the lifecycle where they first become important, there is no such alignment in ITIL 4. I've only included the value chain here for reference this shift. From 26 processes and 4 functions in ITIL v3 to 34 practices in ITIL 4 is a fundamental shift towards a more lightweight approach. It's focused on a smaller set of key outcomes and the practices that support them, and it's better aligned with DevOps, Agile, and Lean approaches. Here I've highlighted the processes and functions from ITIL v3 that have a rough equivalent as practices in ITIL 4. From left to right, you can see what's been left out. Demand management, design coordination, and service catalog management, transition planning and support, validation and testing, change evaluation, and knowledge management, access management, and three of the four functions specified in V3 IT operations, applications, and technical management. These processes and functions didn't just suddenly go away. It's just that every model highlights some things and hides others. For example, ITL V2 was a simpler model with 10 processes and one function. With V3, what had been part of other processes and functions got expanded out. With ITIL-4, it should be clear that Axelos is aiming for a more streamlined model of the critical outcomes to aim for and the practices to help you get there. More on these changes later. Let's finish comparing the ITIL-4 exam spec and the V3 syllabus. At the bottom, I've highlighted the four practices in ITIL-4 with a rough equivalent in ITIL-V3 processes and functions. As you can see, IT asset management is a new and welcome addition as it has been missing from ITIL but has been an established IT practice for some time now. ITIL-4 uses the term practices instead of processes and functions used in ITIL-V3. ITIL-4 includes 34 practices and includes 15 of them in ITIL-4 Foundation. 
versus the 26 processes and 4 functions in the V3 foundation. Also, notice that ITIL4 replaces ITIL V3 service lifecycle strategy, design, transition, operations, and improvement with the service value chain, plan, improve, engage, design and transition, obtain, build, and deliver and support. Unlike ITIL V3, which placed processes and functions in the lifecycle where they first became important, there is no such alignment in ITIL4. In other words, while practices may first become important in one activity in the value chain, the practices and the outcomes they support are firing in all value chain activities. It's just that the amount of effort and attention and nature of tasks varies from activity to activity and over time and circumstances. What's important is identifying and then achieving and maintaining the right set of critical outcomes, which can be achieved through processes, functions, or practices. Here I've highlighted the practices included in the ITIL4 foundation and the processes and functions in ITIL v3 that are roughly or precisely equivalent, at least at the level of the outcome they aim for. You can see that release and deployment management have been separated in ITIL4 and that IT asset management has been added as a practice.